B-Pod Studios. He's elongating. Weekday morning. Here goes Hardy. Touch her and Hardy. I no longer love things. Let's go. Let's ride. Like, let's roll the dice. Sports Hub. Fred, hello. Good morning. Uh, we are Toucher and Hardy in Town Fair Tire Studios. You can give us a call at 617-779-0985. You can watch us on Twitch. On twitch.tv or the Twitch app. And uh, we are brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Big, big show on the way today. Uh, young Nikolai, uh, Nicholas uh, Jamelli, who uh, was at one point uh, left for dead, uh, so alone, he woke up in his own feces. Uh, his now wife uh, thought she was being ghosted. She came to the house and walked in while Nicholas laid in his own feces. I haven't heard that aspect of the story before. Is- yeah. So she came in, and he was uh, covered in poo. <laughs> now, had his illness forced him into a state where he he thought the only way to better himself was to was to cover himself in it, or was it just such a a, a rolling around situation where he got covered in? It? <laughs> well, I can't tell you. I can't speak to the subconscious mind or the or the desire for survival. I'm sure, you can, because <laughs> I never had to knock on wood. Oh, you understand? Thank you. Uh, I've never been in that situation. So who knows when uh, when put in the uh, fight or flight, a, a death is the only option scenario. If one's instinct is to cover themselves in their own feces. Right, right. And uh, and that's the only way for survival is kind of like a temporary gauze. Uh, I don't know. But suffice it to say, it must have been a real stinky affair when his... You ever, like, walk... You, your dog crapped the crate or something when you get up in the morning? Oh, and you can... If it's, like, downstairs, as as you make your way, you're like, oh, something's not right. You can, yeah. you can tell from pretty far away. I wonder if Nick's now wife was relieved... In a way, to see him covered in his own feces, and uh, I'm not, I'm not kidding either, and being uh, unconscious in bed, because it meant that he wasn't cheating on her. Mm. Because remember, she came over there like thinking she was being ghosted by him, right? And who right. wouldn't? I mean, if Nick's not answering the phone when you got a, when you got a prize like that in your jaw, you don't, you don't let go lightly. And so she was. Well, right. Like, you want to? Yeah, I would immediately be uh, be convinced that he was having relations with multiple other women. So the <laughs> only, yeah, you, you don't call, you don't wait it out. You go over there and catch him in the act. Like, well, or just go over there and go like, "Why you're talking to me face to face? Like I, I'm not going to leave this alone." She's a, a strong woman, obviously. She right. Wanted to, you know, she wasn't going to just fade into the ether. She wanted to figure out what's going on. So I wonder when she got in, we've never explored this aspect before because I just thought of it. I wonder if she walked in, if there was a bit of a relief that he was passed out in his own poo (laughs) because it meant that indeed she wasn't the issue. Right, right. Nick Nick was the issue. And then she probably knew she had him because she said how low I've seen him. Yeah. And once I save his life, and we all know Nick was going to be a perennial bachelor, a Hefner type. 
So maybe I just that it, that's when she finally well, the go- set the hook. Yeah, the ghosting situation is problematic enough. But Fred, just think if that if that poor young woman had thought someone else was kneading their feminine fingers into his squishy ass <laughs> and thought perhaps that's what I would be stumbling into. Oh, yeah. What a relief it must have been just to see him three quarters dead, covered in feces. What a relief. Whew. Yeah. It's only that. Yeah, because she probably came in like a hot house flower. Oh, and then yeah. good good choice of words there. Yeah, and then <laughs> uh and then and then noticed that he was covered in his own poo. And went and then she's also had been looking at Mark Jamelli and going, This is the future. Right, yep. right. That's she, right. She's like, So we already know what we got thirty years ago. Personal, from now. handsome, the the tweed hat. Oh, the yeah, whole deal. He's got the Jim Murray special. Now, Jim Murray and Mark Jamelli keeping that scally gap in business. Yeah. When you say hot house flower, do you mean all revved up and randied, or do you mean mad as a hornet? Well, I, I mean, probably used it incorrectly, but thank you for pointing that out. I no, guess mad I, as a hornet. Uh, is mad is not okay. Mad as a hornet. But then when she saw him covered in feces, I can't speak to her own predilections. I mean, maybe she did. <laughs> oh, she get might be a DA type. Uh, we didn't, we didn't think about that. I, yeah. I will. I will nip that in the bud right now. I know this woman very, very well. She's a lovely and woman. That is, she yes. is. Well, I, I don't think her, I was. In, I met her once. I don't think I was ever insinuating she wasn't. I think I've spoken very highly of her even during this break. But nonetheless, Nicholas, uh, the very one. Did everyone here go to the wedding? And is it a sore subject because not everybody went? I did not go to the wedding, but I think I, that I, why I did okay. not go is fairly well established. Yes, I was, oh, uh, yes. it would not have been yes. good for. No, my relationship was teetering on the uh, on a div- on an inevitable divorce, and I don't think that that would have been good to travel. Were you with institutionalized her. at the time? No. Okay. No, I was not institutionalized. At the <laughs> You're time. not in the puzzle factory. Uh, no, I've never what? been to the puzzle factory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dan O'Brien <laughs> invited to the wedding. Did not go. Did not go. Was officiating another wedding on that day? He oh, was. Geez. He was invited. All right. Thanks. I Thanks. think that my separation and and ultimately my divorce very soon should be evidence that uh, th- th- that I wasn't lying. That it probably was not the best I can, I can time with... for me and my then wife to go travel well, together. You didn't have to go with your wife. You could have attended solo. Uh, uh, yeah, that would have gone no, well, too. I, <laughs> as a guy who was present at the time, I think Fred made the right call. Yeah. Uh, I, on I, all accounts, uh, knowing I, what we know now, yeah. Fred absolutely made the right call. I, I don't think that... I, w- I was there. Uh, I think Mike Lockhart was there. Yeah, we were sitting at the same table. Rich was there. Uh, uh, the Lift Shats and uh, Lift Shats and Joe Murray, Joe were, Murray there. were there for some unknown reason. Yes. I don't even. Are you friends with Lift Shats? No, no, you're not. Bird was. But there. listen, have whoever you want. Well, that's what I was getting for. That's why yeah. I brought up Nick. Yeah, and I got so sidetracked because it, he had such a funny thing happen to him. But I, uh, but he saw Bird. They went out and saw a movie last night. We're gonna have the Bird movie review tomorrow. Yeah, and. Uh, I, Nick was telling me this morning as he let me in the building, I forgot my, I forgot my key card. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was telling me that um, that that Bird no longer works at Fenway Park. Oh boy, that's big news. That is big news because uh, some of the the cheaper among us were using Bird as access uh, sometimes. I think into things, and uh, I don't know if that's a fact or not. But Bird, I guess, feels betrayed by the people of Fenway Park. So uh, it, it might be worth having him on the five minutes before we do the break tomorrow for a couple minutes to because Nick is saying he has five or six jobs and just hearing him try to articulate what they are okay. uh, might be an interesting foray into the man's mind. Okay, because he is uh, he's something else that uh, that bird he's not and if he's not at Fenway Park I don't know what he's doing. But then again, there is a part of me, and I'll admit this straight up, that is is a little jealous of Bird. Because ultimately, the only thing that's important in your life is if you're happy, mm-hmm. regardless of the circumstances. I mean, if you're happy and not hurting anyone else, that's all that's important. So, you know, whatever monetary or, you know, perceived success you might have professionally, if you're not happy, it doesn't matter. I think the dynasty... Uh, documentary shows us that. Yeah, if nothing else. If nothing else. And um, Bird seems completely content in his life. 
And it really doesn't matter if he has a job or not. It Because it, he lives with his parents in Port of Pines. Mm-hmm. And they ha- seem to have a lovely beachfront, like, uh, around the beach at least. Because he's always walking on the beach on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And uh, he doesn't seem to have any qualms about living there. He's in his 40s. And if he's happy, I mean, is, that's just that's the goal. So, I mean, you can say whatever you want about the guy, but he's walking around happy, which is the, ultimately the goal. Which the only people I see that in and really, truly think that that's the measuring stick are my kids. That's the, the my kids. I am not one of like, uh, you know, I have not. Uh, it's really up to them. I've not. I swear to God, not put them in a box where uh, like I'm willing them to 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 do something. I I I guided them into certain things, and you know, my son just happens to like some of them, but I've kind of taken my hands off yeah. that stuff. Yeah. But 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 I I but the way I parent is that as long as they're happy and not hurting anyone, then that's all that matters. And so I'm telling them to look to bird, right? That, that make that your measuring stick. Are you are are you happy? Because I think bird checks both those categories: happy, not hurting anyone. Yeah, and he uh, and I. So I'm like you know never read a book. That seems where birds. That's what's generated all this success for birds. Ignore fiction, but he's uh-huh. but he's hustling like three, four, five jobs. Yeah, yeah. I don't know uh, if that's that. See, that's a, that that accurate. That's that hustle culture where yeah, uh, I, just getting up early and taking an ice bath or running a long way is going to make you successful. Yeah, I mean there is a or taking. Uh, Taekwondo, not Taekwondo. Jiu-Jitsu is going to make you somehow successful. I, I think this Red Sox thing has to sting a little bit. This one he'd had for a very long time. Yeah, but job. but like like the amount of time you're working or the amount of jobs you have oh, is right. not indicative necessarily of your financial or uh, career success. Oh, no. In fact, I would think that if you're hustling in quotations and that involves – Things like day trading or starting businesses, uh, the, the chances are you're losing far more money than you're earning, <laughs> because the, because because ma- making money from your money is a incredibly passive activity. I can't stress that enough. I, I like the more your dumb brain as mm-hmm. an individual starts meddling in things that you're no expert in, is the more chances you have to. How many guys in radio do you know, Hardy? That had good radio careers, but then got all caught up in doing other crap, and then oh, I you mean, mean like maybe getting their real estate license? I'm well, only on the air for four hours a day. If you know, I can uh, you know sell uh, three houses a month. Or maybe they opened a restaurant, or they <laughs> oh. uh, started uh, they started like some production company and built yeah. a studio. I mean, it's yeah. something very ingrained in radio that that there's yeah because there's and first of all, if you're only working four hours a day. You're doing the job you're, you're, wrong. You're doing the job okay. wrong. But but say you're a DJ and you just work four. You literally work four hours a day. So there is this. So you could take the money that you work four hours a day for, give it to someone who's, or put it in an S and P five hundred, put it in a Vanguard account. You could do something. But then there's no no. There's this gnawing. Like I have this time. So you could get another job that just pays you. Right. And then you take that money and invest it, or take that money and do what you want with it. But no no no. You know better than all of that. You're going to start investing your own money by hustling, or you're going to start, uh, you, you know, opening these businesses. And the next thing you know, uh, you have no radio job because you've you've put that in the rearview mirror, and you also have uh, no money left because you blew it all. So I got is it, David Goggins is an interesting fellow, but I got I got news for you: is you could run around a track five thousand times, and you're not going to make a dime. Unless you run around the track and find a way to sell the story. Well, I, t- but say that to to Mark Wahlberg, who is probably up in L.A. right now, uh, maybe even on the fifth or sixth hole. You know, they play eighteen <laughs> holes in in fourteen minutes, and it uh, is three in the morning in the dark. Pacific. Yeah, he is in the dark. In yeah. the dark, he's yeah. he's hustling, Fred. He's up. You know, he's get a workout. Eighteen holes. He's had three meals by seven a.m. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a lot of praying going on. I'm just going to say. Com- a lot of commercials and advertisements. Yeah. Trying to get other people to pray. 
it's just uh, he he to me that's your that's your pudding proof right there. Oh, I thought, I, and I also thought his whole thing was he wasn't going to work anymore. Oh, anyway, and I would, uh, but you listen. Uh, Mark Wahlberg is uh, a, a great man. Have you ever asked anyone like from around where he grew up? Uh, do you bring up Mark Wahlberg, and you would think they would be all happy about it, but they're almost universally. I, I was out with someone on Saturday. I was out with a group of people, and one of them grew up like in Dorchester, and like Mark Wahlberg's name came up, and she went like ballistic. They, they, he's like a plight on them. That she feels. Oh, I think people like Donnie. I don't think Donnie was a, a despicable racist. <laughs> <laughs> you know all right uh and mark Wahlberg has been nothing far, but nice as to far me. as i know donnie has never uh gone to anyone and asked for any records to be expunged yeah so. he's never <laughs> been throwing rocks at people on the count of their color all right uh what's going on uh what there was a late night uh, oh, hockey game last late night. night i went to sleep before it even started in seattle i was right there with your friend but we're going to tell you everything that happened so i don't saw you worry. i saw poster and i put on another show in the shootout Oof. Well, mm-hmm. maybe he's last maybe you uh, seriously maybe he should be last all right we'll be right back backstagecountry.com your online home for all things country music <laughs> Wondering who made our list of the top five all-time queens of country music? Did Carrie Underwood make the cut? Find out now when you text Queens to 45911 and scroll through the list on BackstageCountry.com. Text Queens to 45911 to see the talented artists who rounded out our top five list. Which feed of this is going to be used all around the internet? Get up. The cat is finally out of the bag. Get up. We're back. Toucher and Hardy. Get up. 98.5 The Sports Hub. Did you catch a game last night? All right, what happened last night is brought to you by Jack Pocket. Download the app now and use code HOB to get your first lottery ticket free. Uh, i I got to be honest with you. I did not see one minute of this game. I, I have to admit that I was uh, in bed, and I did not go to bed early. I listened to uh, Judge Surratt talk to uh, Montgomery mm-hmm. because I took a 9.30 shower. Uh-huh. But uh, Hardy, what happened? I took a, I took like a. It was a, it was a really weird shower time yesterday. I want to say like three thirty, four o'clock, which is a, that, that's yeah, an that is odd weird. time did to you shower. Had you, had had you done something physical? I did. I played golf yesterday. I walked nine, and it was fantastic. I don't but, know where these golf courses are open. The day uh, is. I mean, yesterday was great. Today's supposed to be pretty good. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna get on. Here, here are two days to do uh, but, it. But old, where, uh, nothing's open. That old I know. Scotland Lynx was open. I'd never oh, played it. Went to Scotland? How is I, I that? Went, I went to Scotland and was back by you know two thirty. Drove home from the airport and then showered. No, it's in Bridgewater, and I've been and been invited to play. I've had you know friends who have played it, and I've been told it's great. And we played yesterday, and it was great. But yeah, that it, where's Bridgewater? Uh, it's in uh, uh, North Carolina. No, no, I understand it's, in the, it's a suburb of Mass. It's of part of the Boston. Bridgewater Triangle. Maybe you've heard of the strange <laughs> goings on, and that I'm not making that up. You don't no. know the Bridgewater Triangle? I don't know where oh, Bridgewater shenanigans. is. Oh, shenanigans. I was in, uh, you know, where does where does Breer live? Uh, South Shore, Route Duxbury? 3. Duxbury? Duxbury, oh, okay. thank you. Okay, okay. He doesn't so, even live that far away. What's he complaining about? I was far as hell away. Duxbury, thank you, local. Duxbury isn't D-O-B. even that far away. What are you complaining about? Uh, Duxbury. I, I, uh, uh-uh, I was far away. I, where the hell was I? I was in one of them places by the water. South Shore. <laughs> okay. Uh, on Friday night. I was far. Plymouth? Uh, not uh, Plymouth. I, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll tell All you right. the restaurant I was at. You do the math. All right. All right, go ahead. I wouldn't want to be driving up here uh, every day from Duxbury. I don't. Bl- I don't. Yeah, bl- Route three is a nightmare. No, like, Ducks. Listen, it sucks, but he acts like he can't get here on time. And I got to just tell you that it's not that bad. No, uh, Bridgewater is southbound twenty four. So you know, uh, you, by like uh, you go Fall past River. 
No, 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 God, no, not that far. It's like twenty four and four ninety five. It's right? like ten miles uh, past IKEA. I like how you say. Oh, all right. I know exactly where that is. Oh, uh, I know okay. where that is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, oh, and you lived down there. Yeah, I mean, it was it was twenty five minutes. Oh, that ain't for me. bad. That ain't nothing. Uh, that ain't nothing, baby. Don't worry about it. I'm looking. I'm looking like an idiot just for my own edification to find out where I was. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at my credit card bill. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry. Hold I'll on. Figure I'll it check out. my Life 360. I can find out where you were on Friday night. <laughs> Please do. I need someone keeping tabs on me. Well, let me tell you something. I was not pleased with your speed when you were driving home. Well, I'm sorry. Too but... slow. <laughs> that was... <laughs> That'll be the day. <laughs> I'm, all right. Uh, all right. Go uh, ahead. Uh, uh, there's, uh, Bruins playing out in Seattle last night. It was a, it was a great night for David Pasternak. Let's start with the good stuff first. Hingham. Bruins in the pocket. I was in Hingham. Oh, oh okay. Uh, lot, careful out there. A, lot, I, a little, little bit of swinging going on. Ah, that's where I was at the swinging restaurant. Yeah, but how the hell is that a swinging restaurant? I don't what, know. what 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 restaurant this? are we talking about? I, 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 I'm not saying. I, I don't remember. I honestly would tell you if I knew it off the top of my head. Okay. but I'm not going to look. Isn't it funny though? Because it's just a restaurant. Like it, it, it's funny because like I went with uh, someone, I went with relatives, not my relatives, but two relatives. So it wouldn't have been swinging; it would have been a very uncomfortable affair. Oh, you went with two people who are related, who are related. Okay, because that's an odd way to describe somebody you're not related to. Two relatives who I'm uh, not my relatives. Yeah, well, you got the gist of it, and uh, and so we went to this place that's so funny. <laughs> So, like, the person, one of the people I went with was like, yeah, this, they're joking, like, this is like a swinging place, but, like, they, I don't really know how it's a swinging place. Is there a huge fish bowl at the hostess stand? No, it's, like, it's a good, <laughs> it's a good restaurant. I, like, enjoyed the restaurant. Sure, but it's, it, but it's lovely town. But it's, uh, it was, I couldn't see nothing. It was dark. But the, uh, apparently it's right there on the water. But, uh, and this fellow works in the city, he takes a boat. Uh, into the city every oh, day, boy. Hmm. but uh, one of them uh, ferries. But the yeah. so the thing is, is that uh, so this this restaurant in Hingham is supposed to be this big swinging restaurant, and so you would assume there's like a dance floor and like all this stuff, but it's just some restaurant. Like and it's and it wasn't a particularly there was nothing about it at all that was swinging. So it, I mean, this I don't know if. What's the like dr- they, if they lock the door like, at a certain <laughs> point and then it turns into a swinging place? Is there, uh, is there anything like very subtle, like the dress code? It's like men have to wear smoking jackets, women spaghetti straps. Uh, Just or, yeah, or, or they're the ugliest of your parents' friends uh, <laughs> or, or your friends' parents. Right. Uh, no, there was nothing, and I was. I mean, you know, when they say it's a swinging restaurant, I'll tell you this: it was seems so innocuous that I like lost focus on it being a swinging restaurant like two minutes after we were there because i like kept looking around and it was like families and stuff wow. mm. and it wasn't early it was like seven thirty, which nowadays is prime time for dining you know these restaurants are like shutting down at nine now because no one wants to go out late so uh that is so funny that you said it yeah i went to that place that was the place i was good for you yeah, yeah it's a good weekend i ended up just with the, the same partner though at no. the end. Oh, Sorry. That's no good. I uh, thought I was going to get to switch it up. But, but you go uh, home and watch the ice storm, and then you you learn about the, 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 you know, the, the dark side of swinging because it doesn't always go well. And sometimes your kid ends up electrocuted. Oh, boy. All right. I have uh, a friend who uh, they, they, you can't dip your toe in swinging. That's, <laughs> you're, that relationship ain't going to last. Yeah, I, I, I think it's just wrought with pitfalls. Yeah, you got to go. You got to just go like we're swinging. Or we're not going to swing at all. Like, you can't yeah. kind of poke around the swinging scene. Wait a minute. I bought this house with this pit in the living room. Yeah, You're telling me this is worthless now? Yeah. It, I mean, I'll tell you, because uh, someone might get really into it and someone might not. <laughs> yeah. Is one thing that can happen. You wait or, up on the top step, sir. I'll see you in a couple of hours. Sure. Or, or you know, what might happen is the people that, end up, that, that are having a side relationship might actually... End up having uh, feelings for each other. I yeah. d- see. I don't think that's one thing you would ever have to worry about. No, or no, any because kind of jealousies or anything. No, because no. you've had the conversation with your partner that you weren't going to ever feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, is the minute you start having a sexual uh, uh, affair that turns into speaking to the person a lot, you know, chances are 
that that can somehow turn yes. into a uh, – so if you're going to swing, you got to just be like – you got to establish the rules and be like, we're never going to stop swinging. Well, uh, first of all, just let me say sorry. That did not happen last night. Fred went on his swinging adventure on Friday night. Oh, yeah. This oh. is – that's yeah. four nights removed. What Struck happened? out, but I was uh, but I was at the swinging place. Okay. What happened last night was this. Roots in the puck ahead. Pops are not going to break. Walks in, shoots. He scores! Oh, wonderful. A goal for David Pasternak made it one nothing Boston. And then David Pasternak did it again. Near side Pasternak, right of the net now, Martian. Tried to send it back up top. McAvoy keeps it in. Threw it into the slot. Zaka's going to chase. Back of the net now, Zaka centered. Nice score! Pasta's got a pair! Oh! He's got a pair, all right. Big swing and cojones. Double P's. He's going to take the hang on this weekend and give him what for. That made it 2-1, Boston. They've got the lead. They've got the lead again. Uh-oh. Wait, wait a second. 3-2 Seattle? Left circle, Martian. His shot blocked. Retrieved. Oh. Nice job by Zaka. Zaka and Coyle both retrieved pucks here. Now Pasternak, right circle, shoots. He scores! It's all! You can eat pasta here in Seattle. He sizzled one. Low blocker. A power play goal. The hat trick. Bruins three and the Kraken three. The how many? Equalizer. How much pasta do you really want? Mm. All you can eat pasta. Yeah. Well, as you well know, and I, 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 I understand. We all understand this. The breadsticks and the salad are the things that you really gorge on. At Olive Garden. You know, I've never mm-hmm. been to an Olive Garden. Shut up. Wow. That's not true. No, it is certainly true. Breadsticks uh, are outstanding at the Olive the, Garden. Where's my phone screener, Nicholas? Nicholas, come in here, Nicholas. Nicholas! Nicholas! <laughs> Nicholas! <laughs> Squishy there's Nicky! Pe- there's three See, people that on the one phone. might stick. I like that one. <laughs> All right. I don't, I'm not going to talk about how he feels. I don't need a harassment law. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, what, the, the breadsticks are outstanding. Here's what we should do as a show. And I mean everything. Oh, there it is. It was we, covered by the we, house. We caravan down 24. We pull off. We go to Ikea uh, <laughs> just because just we're right there. We go to the Olive Garden, which mm-hmm. is nearby. Oh, yeah. And then we take a few uh, miles more down 24, and then we go play golf down there at the Scotland Links. Someone got free golf yesterday. We stopped at it. We stopped it at the well, furniture I, store. I, I did because my friend Pete paid only because yeah. he got there before us. So now mm. I owe him around. Oh, oh nice. boy. Okay. Uh, anyway, that made it three three. Boston, the uh, Pasternak hat trick. And, of course, the Bruins can't finish a game in regulation anymore, and they couldn't finish in overtime, and it goes to a shootout. It'll be Kyler Yamamoto. He's two for three in the shootout. Hell of a buildup. And the best (laughs) on the Kraken. All right, very good. So he, <laughs> so they lost. He, but he scored, Fred. A right-handed stick. I got. I do have a point about the game, and I didn't see it, but I, I did watch the shootout or the failed shootout. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. How can Postrock have a hat trick and be so terrible at the shootout? I don't know. All right, and while we're at it, let's get to the important information because we have two callers on. One, I see what he's saying. Uh, Peter, uh, what is the dress code at the swinging place? You tell me. Yeah, well, I found out um, not because I was trying to, but um, my parents actually went there, and my dad went away. He went to the restroom, and my mom was wearing a horizontally striped shirt, and this other couple approached her while my dad was in the bathroom, and they go, well, we noticed what you're wearing. You know, would you care to come back to our place? And my mom was like, I no idea what you're talking about and then they proceeded to fill them in on you know the misunderstanding but that, and uh, how long ago was this and how old is your mom she's well she's now 60 i'd say it was about 10 years ago okay so 10 years ago do you think the place is st- is do you know if the place is still considered a, sw- a swinging place yeah it, it's swinging but also mostly just like divorce Ooh, well, I don't oh. mind that. Mm. You know what they say about divorcees? They're hard to trot. <laughs> and by the way, Andrew is on another line, and he says striped shirt. And uh, oh, There you go. Uh, all right, Andrew, maybe don't give the name of the place, but it's it's a striped shirt, and what else do you have to do? The um, I will not name the establishment, um, but it, I do frequently 
go there to this day. Um, the caller before me, yes, the stripes are correct. I am not a swinger, <laughs> but that is the the rumor around town. And then you put you say you also put your highly. You put your keys on the table. You said correct that the keys the keys go on the table or on the bar, and uh, that is a the uh, the the key word for your swinger there. Wow! So mm, that's, I, uh, thank you. Well, yep, I, w- I was. Yep, it was. That's, uh, I'm in my fifties, and it's been like that for the last uh, since I've ever known. All right. Well, uh, God bless the place. Interesting. Because uh, I do like that there's a uniform and that you if you dress like a referee. So if you dress like a referee, I wonder if if you just like everyone's fawning all over you. You know, if if Bird has some free time this spring that he's not working at Fenway anymore, do you think he'd be interested in heading into this place and throwing his keys on the bar and just letting us know what happens? I mean, he I don't know if he's got a partner. I just think we just have Nick and his wife go. <laughs> I mean, just, he's got a pack of keys. Just a huge key ring on the bar and stripes everywhere. I want him chewing fruit stripe gum. I mm. want stripes on the pants. Yeah, I, I want there to be no mistake what he what he's <laughs> what he's getting after. It's a total visual bit, and it would never work. But <laughs> it would be kind of funny if just someone dressed like a referee and went there. <laughs> And like a big ass thing of like uh, Fisher Price keys, like from like babies, <laughs> a, a, and just, ki- like, a key to the city. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. to you put that on. The you dress like a referee and put a key to the city on sure. the table, and just see what happens. That would be a great visual bit. We need your it, buddy from the Super Bowl to come out here. Oh, did Seba- <laughs> Seb- Sebastian would ha- have sex with the person <laughs> and tape it, and then go like, "What do you want me to do?" <laughs> Not, not that. Yeah. Come back in time and don't yeah. do that. He's an, he's a, he's an odd fella. All right, so we'll be back in just a moment. Backstagecountry.com, your online home for all things country music. Award-winning movies often have incredible soundtracks, and many of those have gone on to become country gold. We've picked our top five country songs that have been nominated for an Oscar. Text Oscar to 45911 to see if your favorite made the list on BackstageCountry.com. Text Oscar to 45911, and we'll send the link straight to your phone. Touch. Dressed like a gorilla. Half hearty. A big, beautiful ball of flame. And a whole lot of Boston sports. And I have had many offers to become an insider. Sports hey, we are Toucher and Hardy. Rock and roll Mike, hi. Rock and roll Mike, 98.1. Five, the sports hub. We're, yeah, how you guys doing? We're good, rock and roll Mike. Where are you? All right, I was in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm on my way to Texas. You're on your way to yeah. Texas. Are you now? How are you getting to Texas? I'm I'm thumbing it. Yeah, I I got I got ten fingers. You know. Yeah, I'm baby, thumbing you're thumbing it, and so, so yeah, I got to do what I got to do. But I'll be back home in the summertime. But you know, I just wanted to call and say, yeah, come out there the noise goes. <laughs> Rock your boys. With that wild, wild, wild. Wild, wild, wild. Say it, guys. Say it, guys. Little man. Touch up. Yeah. Hey, little dear. I, 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 I don't know why. <laughs> I yeah. don't know why. I don't know why. Anymore. Anymore. Come on, I'll feel the noise. Come on. Come on. Anybody at the bus stops, anybody at stops, stops, green lights, red lights, come on. You're singing the song, you're going to work, sing it. Come on. Uh, stop them. You get a green light, stop them. All right, rock and roll, Mike. Everyone loves rock and roll, Mike. Thank you, rock and roll. Surprised he's still going to run for president in 2020. Oh, that was several years ago. This cold weather is a drag. Yes, it is. Yeah, he's a he's a treasure. 
Uh, he's and he's never gone quiet riot or slayed before. That was brand new. I mean, usually it's the same material. It, it, it is if it, it as if he prepared for this phone call. Yeah, well, he I got to change it up a little bit. He, he was also far more loose uh, tongue than he normally is. I mean, he was, party every day. He was really <laughs> slurring a storm. Be yeah, listening no. at uh, six fifty five this morning for your chance to score a four pack of vouchers <laughs> for the Friday March eighth session of the Harpoon Brewery St. Patrick's Day Festival. At their Seaport District Beer Hall. Enjoy live music, local food vendors, and hopefully rock and roll mic. Anybody knows! For the first time, entertainment will be by Beyond Wrestling. Grab your tickets now at harpoonbrewery.com. That's coming up at 650. I would imagine he has a great deal of success hitchhiking. Yeah. I, I got to give the fans what they want. It's if he's it. I'm going to remove all day doubt. In case you were wondering if I was wasted, yes, indeed. That is what you're signing up for. Rock and roll Mike could really just, on a windy day, jump in the air and just <laughs> float to wherever he wanted to go. Rock and roll Mike, not a heavy man. I don't think he's clear like the gunner, but he's close. There is videos that people send me from Instagram from, like, because, like, whatever Instagram accounts do zany stuff where you can see rock and roll Mike running around in the background yelling. Like, he's the focal point of it. Like, there's one where there's a guy, like, out dining outside with his girlfriend, and the joke is he's can obviously hear rock and roll Mike in the distance and he starts like filming her like in a romantic way and rock and roll Mike comes by yelling and screaming. Oh. Yeah. Rock and roll Mike's gone viral. They just don't know it's rock and roll Mike. Okay. The problem with rock and roll Mike though in in bringing him in studio or having him come to your show at the Wilbur is that he's very hard to cage even outside. <laughs> oh baby. <laughs> he is very hard to cage. He, he, I mean, it is a real situation with Rock and Roll Mike. The He's, stories, man. Yeah, he, Afterwards, oh boy. He'll put his hands on you. Yeah. Not in a bad way. No, he's. I think he's got a gentle touch about him. And as he said, he's giving the fans what they want. Hot balls! Hot balls! Yeah, he was real. He was... You get you want your picture taken with Rock and Roll Mike. He's gonna put his hands around you. He's gonna put his arm around you. All right, Hardy. What else is going on? Uh, you shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Too much of love drives a man insane. You broke my will, but what a thrill! Goodness gracious, hot balls. Kisses me, baby. And I got, and I got, and I got, and I feels good. I got. Something to tell you people, I'm working on an album. <laughs> Hot balls! My favorite is when he's just hey. talking in a normal voice during those songs. <laughs> um, I got to tell you something. <laughs> I gotta tell you. Uh, the lowly, lowly Pistons oh. cannot catch a break, Fred. Last night, they had a chance to, lo and behold, win a basketball game. Um they were uh, up 8.5 seconds left when the New York Knicks, Dante DiVincenzo, pretty much leg tackled. Is it Osar Thompson? Yes. Okay. Of the Pistons. No call. It was, I mean, it, it wasn't even like an intentional foul. It was a blatant loose ball foul that should have been called and should have given the Pistons the ball. Near midcourt, by the way. This yeah. happened all the way out at midcourt. Up yes. two yep. in the waning seconds of the game, not only was there not a call, the Knicks got the basketball on the possession. I still don't know how I've seen like sidelines of it. It was a hell of a play to get the ball, but there was the most blatant foul committed. No call. Knicks get the ball, score, go on to a 113-111 victory uh, Monty Williams, Pistons head coach, said, absolute worst call of the season. Enough's enough. We've done it the right way. We've called the league. We've sent in clips. We're sick and tired of hearing the same stuff over and over again. Uh, what more can we do, coach? I don't know what to tell him anymore. So <laughs> I think he may be losing this team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they're eight and forty nine. I mean, well, the good news the worst is record in the league. <laughs> it's good news is when he was first hired, he wasn't the highest paid coach in NBA history. Yes. 
which he, of course, is. All right. Upon uh, post-game review, the officials determined that Thompson gets to the ball first and then was deprived of the opportunity to gain possession. Therefore, a loose ball foul should have been whistled yeah. on New York's Dante DiVincenzo. Yeah, but unfortunately, that's not how the uh, appeals process works. No. They, uh, It has to be something like there was six guys on the court or you called the timeout that you actually didn't have. It can't be... Uh, like a opinion, it has to be That's a right. fact. And we're by, wrong, and by, but we're not changing. By the it. way, right. Cade Cunningham went off again, like thirty-two points. Yeah. He doesn't know what to do anymore. Uh, and in in games where he scores thirty or more, the Pistons are still like one in ten. Yeah, so well, it doesn't matter. You can talk to the kid in San Antonio that's going to win Rookie of the Year, even though his team sucks. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Backstagecountry.com, your online home for all things country music. <laughs> Wondering who made our list of the top five all-time queens of country music? Did Carrie Underwood make the cut? Find out now when you text Queens to 45911 and scroll through the list on BackstageCountry.com. Text Queens to 45911 to see the talented artists who rounded out our top five list. Ta-da! With Toucher and Hardy on 98.5 The Sports Hub. Hey, caller number 10 right now to the Sports Hub contest line 617-931-0985. We'll score a four-pack of vouchers for the Friday, March 8th session. Of the Harpoon Brewery St. Patrick's Day Festival at the Seaport District Beer Hall. Enjoy live music, local vendors. For the first time, entertainment by Beyond Wrestling. Yeah! (laughs) Hooray! Three cheers for Harpoon Brewery. Don't slip and slide in the suds, fellas. While your foreheads gush blood. Uh, grab your tickets now at harpoonbrewery.com, but card time number 10 wins right now. I was watching, uh, this, uh, thing on Vince McMahon when I couldn't take a nap. You ever get stuck on the iPad or something of that uh, nature? And, uh, they were talking about the John Stossel interview that they, he did with 2020 with, oh, yeah. with Schultz, where he goes, that's an open hand slap. Did that seem fake? And then they were showing him with the wrestler that was going to break kayfabe. He was the guy who showed him how he, they cut their foreheads, and he was okay. cutting his foreheads mm-hmm. with John Stossel. John Stossel uh, had hearing loss after Schultz hit him in the head. Yeah, that's what he said. And then uh, once uh, sh- uh, he sued the WWF, and Schultz, uh, Vince McMahon, fired Schultz, even though Schultz says that he told him to hit him. Then that he told Vince McMahon, because Vince McMahon told him, don't break kayfabe, whatever you do. Because they found they did a survey that one of three people thought wrestling was still real, and John Stossel, for some reason, that really pissed off John Stossel that he couldn't just let he couldn't let good things be. Oh, Stossel okay. hit the bricks. The only guy with a mustache around here is made of iron and is a sheik. <laughs> or he's John Stossel. I don't think you're very ravishing, like Rick Rude. Who also had a mustache, you know. When did we lose the Iron Sheik? A couple of years ago? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. no, it was just last June. Yeah, I wear a black armband. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure that uh, Iron Sheik was actually doing <clears throat> all those tweets from his uh, social media Oh, really? Account. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that was <laughs> well, all Who did that? <laughs> well, you want to get your throat slit? Hey, Jack. He swore a lot. Ha ha ha. I can't find anything about Bar- Bill Parcells having a daughter here. And this it, I, I looked here. it up. That is her name. I can't find a picture of her. She's very elusive. Mm-hmm. You know, all these wrestling fans. Yeah? <laughs> what do you want to know? Back in 2013. Yeah, we're getting laid like crazy. Iron Sheik's managers crowdsourced. $40,441 to write, direct, and produce a documentary. Yeah, he does heroin in it, yeah. and that's not a joke. Uh, Ara- uh, Iranian legend, and the Iron Sheik story. The only, f- the only crowdsourced forty grand from all these wrestling fans. 
to produce an Iron Sheik documentary. That's yeah, all, that's all when, you people coughed up. Yeah, when there's a gorgeous George documentary, I'll, then I'll finally put the greenbacks down. You know what they should have done, Hardy? You know what they should have done? Hey, Hardy, you know what they should have done for the match? What? They should have done something where they had the producers get in the middle of the ring and suspended from the ceiling was a attache case full of cash and a ladder underneath the attache case. And then they had to get up the ladder. And if they were able to... Hardy, yeah. if they were able to grab <laughs> right. the attache case, they could have had the money inside and made the documentary. If not, splat. <laughs> on the mat, they would have fallen. That is a that that is a new twist on the Jay Stu imitation when he gets uh, uh, oddly positively excited. Not angry. But, he, but no, no th- that is an idea is brewing, Jay Stu. It's a jack. Jackpot. You f- it's the a light bulb, Jay Stu. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. Jackpot. Jackpot, you got the money. Or splat. No money. No. Back to the rafters, the, the suitcase goes. The attache case filled with cash. Oh, I got lightheaded doing Jay Stu. <laughs> You're okay. I'm not getting enough oxygen. All right. No commercials. Uh, just the headlines. Uh, the Kraken are a cool name. We'll tell you how they got it in just a moment.